Titana boa has often been considered the largest snake in history, and it's pretty partial, known from just a few vertebra and a few parts of the skull. But now there's a new contender that is similarly pretty partial. In fact, this one is also mostly just vertebra, and that makes sense when you're thinking of snakes, because snakes are really, really hard to fossilize. When you want something to fossilize, you want a dense, heavy bone. This is normally limb bones, which snakes don't have, or some of the skull bones, which snakes have very derived skulls that are very lightly built so that they can expand so far. So snakes just kind of suck in the fossil record. Fortunately though, this new one, Gatsuki indicus, was large enough that a lot of those vertebrae, which don't fossilize as easily, were able to get preserved. And some of them were actually still articulated, meaning that there would have been the whole body of the snake there, and the vertebrae weren't just all spread out over an area which is pretty neat to find. Interestingly, Vatsuki comes from about the same time period as Titanoboa, but on almost the opposite side of the globe, coming from India, which India would have been mostly isolated at this time during the Eocene 47 million years ago. And that's because it was on its own sub, kind of small continental plate that was drifting northwards and eventually did run into Asia, but at this time it was just kind of a very large island in the middle of what would become the Indian Ocean. Named after the Hindu serpent Vasuki, it could have been potentially over 40 feet in length, or over 12 meters. And that's a fairly conservative estimate, some of them do get it up all the way to 15 meters, so pushing 50 feet, it would have been a massive snake. And the thing is, even if it is more of those kind of conservative numbers, that's still a very, very large snake. You're talking about a 40 foot long snake, longer than any modern day snake. Part of the reason there's that range is we don't have any modern day relatives of it and that's because it's a matisoid snake. And based on what we've done with other studies for phylogenetics, it's likely this group was fairly closely related to the pythons, so they probably shared a fairly similar lifestyle. And that's really interesting when you think about modern large snakes. It's not just the anaconda, which is a type of boa, instead you also have very long snakes like Burmese and reticulated pythons, both of which are pythons, or at least in the python group. Interestingly, the bones also suggest some different lifestyle habits than what you would see in Titanoboa. Titanoboa has generally been considered very similar to an anaconda. It would have likely lived in the water and hunted prey near the edge of the water or even in the water, as opposed to just laying out on the surface and hunting prey that way. This is really interesting because Batsuki doesn't have the same kind of rib attachments that we do see in many marine or aquatic snakes. Now there is some variation there, certain types of aquatic snakes do have similar ribs to Vasuki, but most of them don't. And in fact, the ribs do seem pretty similar to what we would see in things like those pythons, meaning potentially it's a pretty similar lifestyle. So you can think of your Burmese pythons, your African rock pythons that are just kind of sitting on the surface, wait for something large to come by and have a snack. Because of its size, it probably wasn't getting super far up into trees. That said, Malay Python, the genus, which is the reticulated python, actually does have some good ability to climb trees after prey. It just needs to be a fairly sturdy tree to support the weight of the animal. This also tracks pretty well with modern evidence, and by that I mean specifically the geologic evidence that suggests it would have lived in a damp marshland, and you can compare that to the Everglades, where Burmese pythons got released and now they're everywhere. They're doing very, very well, but they're not necessarily aquatic snakes. These authors are also able to do a paleobiogeography study, and what I mean by that is they looked at where we find these animals in the fossil record and went, hey, are there any trends? And they're basically all from the southern continents. Meanwhile, we actually do have some relatives of pythons from the northern continents, notably Germany, which would have been subtropical at the time of those about 50 million years ago. So it seems like potentially the pythons were just the northern members of this group that actually did survive, and then the matisoids were the southern members of this group that survived almost to the modern day, with the last of these animals going extinct potentially just a few thousand years ago in Australia. And that's really unfortunate, I would love to see their genetics and how closely they actually were related to pythons, see if that actually could line up with when those continents started breaking apart and becoming more isolated between the southern and northern continents. Also, I would love to do it just because I like having more snakes to look at. Snakes are neat.